is a truly remarkable story. In this exchange, we see the power of pushing back, but it is demonstrated through an act of submission. We see the upper hand in this story gained simply by accepting a lesser designation or a lesser position. We see a remarkably rare woman in a desperate situation whose back was up against the wall. A woman who stayed cool, calm, collected, Stayed cool, calm, and collected, yet undeterred, despite the very real barriers of race and time that stood in her way. A woman who moved out of her of turn. It wasn't her turn. It's, it's popular us to say, neighbor, it's your turn. But in our text, it wasn't her turn. It was not her turn. It was not her time. Yet she didn't argue the unfairness of the situation. Everybody now, it's not fair. It's not fair. It's not right. It's, this is that. it's unfair. She didn't argue the unfairness of a situation. She didn't argue that the severity of her situation, uh, because it was severe, it deserves an exception. That wasn't her argument. You should look at me a certain kind of way because my situation is worse than those who are in line of head, ahead of me, so therefore I should be moved to the front of the line. That was not her position. This remarkable woman, got what she wanted from the Lord. Instead of arguing, she simply submitted and asked the Lord. She said to the Lord, help me. She didn't fight. She didn't get discouraged. And yet, she didn't quit. She submitted and she got what? She wanted. This is a story of a woman of great faith. And her, before it was her time, she met with Jesus Christ. She had an encounter. You know, something happens when great faith encounters the King of Kings and the Lord of lords. This woman in our text handled quite well, I might add, these 13 men. For one of the 13 was 100% man and 100% God. The 12 were 100% men. She handled these 13 men with class in a day where there were no women's rights. There was nobody protesting. And yet, this woman got what she wanted from the Lord. A remarkable woman. A smart woman but a rare woman, a 
Are you with me today? You all not saying amen? Let me deal with the contextual, contextual setting. First of all, the location. They were at the coast, according to verse 21, of Tyre and Zidane. Here now for the first time. Interesting note. This was the first time in our Lord's earthly ministry that Jesus entered into pagan territory. Until this occasion, he only went into the land that was occupied by Jews. He goes outside of the Jewish territory. And he leaves Palestine. His purpose for leaving was so that he could get, to be honest with you, some rest. We find our Lord looking for downtime. Are you with me? And he goes there to prepare the disciples for what is to come. The end was near. Soon he would be crucified. There were things that he needed to say to them and things that he needed to teach them and he needed to teach them uninterrupted. And there was no place for him to teach them these things in Palestine. So they go to an area where they know that they would not be known. Are you with me? So our Lord and in our text, he goes north through Galilee until he comes to the land of Tyre and Sidon. In Tyre and Sidon, there are no scribes to bother. No Pharisees to try to trip him up. No popularity problems because no one really is supposed to have known him in the Gentile uh, territories. No problem from the Jews, just Phoenicians. Now the supreme significance of this passage is that it foreshadows the going out of the gospel to the whole world. <coughs> so, excuse me, in the land of Phoenicians, and I'll talk to you in a moment about them because the Phoenician, the Phoenicians uh, did not think well of the Jews. They didn't like the Jews at all. So our Lord now is in, a pro in an area where there's no pressure. God knows that's a blessing. No problem. And where he can take a well-deserved break. And where there's no pressure, no problem, got it made, laying back, the text says, and behold, a woman of Canaan came out to meet them. This woman was of the Canaanite stock of the Gentiles. Now, when Matthew masterfully used the term Canaanite, Matthew alerted his Jewish readers that this woman was an, a descendant of Israel's ancient enemies. So when he describes her as a Canaanite, that's a mark, Mother Martin, against her. Luke, when you read about her in Luke chapter 7, Luke tells us that she is a Syrophoenician woman, which, uh, uh, which tells us that... Uh, the Phoenicians in those days belonged administratively to Syria. And Josephus tells us, uh, that he says this of the Phoenicians, uh, the tyrants, calling the Phoenicians tyrants, have the most ill feelings toward us. So the Phoenicians didn't care anything for the Jews. So this woman got several strikes against her. Number one, Jesus wasn't in town to heal anybody. He's in town to rest. Number two, she is uh, a Canaanite. She's a descendant of the ancient enemies of Israel. And thirdly, in particular, she's a Syrophoenician. So the, the Phoenicians care nothing for the Jews. This is a Gentile woman who came to Jesus out of turn not time for the Gentiles to get healings and to get blessings. 
You remember our Lord sent his disciples out a little earlier and said, go not the way of the Gentiles. Hadn't come. Wasn't time yet. And our text tells us something else about this woman. Ladies, she is a mother. Not only does our text tell us that she's a mother, but she's a mother of a daughter who is vexed with the devil. Mark tells us that her daughter had an unclean spirit. Her daughter was uncontrollable. Her daughter was inconsolable. Her daughter had demons in her. Her daughter needed help. So here is a Seraphonician mother whose daughter, praise God, is in bad shape. And she somehow, the word got out, somehow it was leaked because she was not invited. Jesus wasn't there to invite anybody. The, Come unto me, all you that labor and heavy laden, uh, didn't extend to the Seraphonicians at this time. Praise the Lord. They had, the Seraphonicians hadn't even heard it because where, when Jesus said that, he said it in the Palestine regions where the Jews were. So here is this mother whose daughter is vexed. Jesus and his disciples are enjoying some much needed rest and just like that, the tranquility is broken. The peaceful afternoon has been disturbed. The quietness has been broken up by the cries of a mother. Praise the Lord. Four things that we need to consider today is her request, his rejection, her reaction, and his response. She made a request. He rejected her. She reacted to his rejection, and he responded to her reaction. Oh, there's so much to be learned, ladies and gentlemen, from this Syrophoenician Canaanite woman who came to Jesus out of turn, and how this one lady with no soldiers, with no help, with no entourage, stood in front of 13 Jewish men. One of the Jewish men was the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And this brilliant lady handled these 13 men and got just what she wanted from the Lord. Good God Almighty. Bible said that she cried, according to verse 22. She cried, she screamed, she cried to the Lord. Let me tell you a little something about her, about her request. She had already turned away from uh, Astarte, better known as Asterisk, uh, the goddess of futility, fertility, excuse me, <laughs> goddess of fertility and, and, uh, and uh, the goddess of sexual love, it's the goddess, uh, a stone goddess who couldn't help her daughter. She had tried all of the religions of her region, and her daughter was still vexed with the devil. I don't advise this. There's a song that says, when you've tried everything else and everything else has failed, try Jesus. It's not my advice. My advice is to try Jesus first. But if you have tried everything else, and everything else has failed, don't commit suicide. Don't jump off the cliff. Don't blow, blow your own brains out. Don't leave your family. Don't quit your job. Don't turn to drugs. Try Jesus. Amen. He's still in the healing business. He's still in the saving business. She had been failed by all of the gods that she knew. She had become disillusioned with idolatry and immoral debauchery. No matter how many men she had been with as she worshipped 
uh, Asheroth, the sex couldn't heal her daughter. God Almighty. And she came to Jesus, and this is something that I like about her. You, you, she made, listen to this. This won't fly. I won't get an amen on this one because of the times in which we live. But according to verse 22, she made no demands. She didn't walk up to Jesus with a f putting a foot down. She didn't walk up to Jesus to tell, to tell him what he, better, what he better do. As a matter of fact, she knew that she was not entitled to anything from him. She knew it. She knew that she was quite undeserving. Well, how do you know that, Pastor Wooden? How do you know what she knew? I know this based on her request. You know what she asked for? She asked for mercy. She said, have mercy on me. So when you ask for mercy, mercy, you're acknowledging that you're not entitled. You, when you ask for mercy, you're acknowledging that you deserve what has happened to you. Mercy. Notice what she didn't ask for. She didn't say, Lord, give me justice. Mm -mm. She didn't, if Jesus didn't say, this woman being a daughter of Abraham, oh, oh, she should be healed. No, 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 no. This woman had no legal claim at the time for what she was asking for. And she knew it. She came to the Lord and she said, have mercy. And then, uh, 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 Miller, I, I see something else about it. I felt like Rubio did. She, praise the Lord, had denounced those other gods. How do I know? By the way, she addressed him. She called Jesus the son of David. Son of David is a messianic title. Son of David is an official title, which means Messiah. Son of David means holy one. When people call Jesus the son of David, uh, he knew that they recognized something about him. She had left her religious beliefs. She had left her goddess of stones. She had left her family. She had left all that she was familiar with. She left all of that and cried to the Lord. Son of David, have mercy on me. She forsook all to get into the presence of the Lord. And with all that good that she, all the good that she did, the Bible says, and he answered her, not a word. Because so, all of us deal with those kinds of moments. Then prayed and sought the Lord, paid our tithe, given our offering, did everything right, got it right with the enemy, got it right with our friends, went back, called mom, did everything you knew to do. Then made a request. Nothing. Oh, my Lord. Because you know what comes to your mind after you've done all that? Wait a minute, Lord. They told me that once I do all of this, you know, you were going to answer. Yet Jesus, do you see it in the Bible? But he answered her, not a word. And she tells him what the problem is. She tells him she's a mother. She says, my daughter, you, hear, you see that? It's grievously vexed. Not just vexed. Not just vexed. She's not in the first stage. She's not in the first stage of vexation. She's grievously vexed. If it was cancer, it'd be the fourth stage. She's as vexed as she can be. The girl is messed up. I'm asking you for mercy. And uh, Jesus Christ answers her not a word. Sometimes in life, the hardest answer is no answer at all. 
I mean, you really don't know what to say when the Lord says nothing. Do I or don't I? Is he is or is he ain't? What's the deal? You don't hear my preaching. He says, praise the Lord, nothing. And some of you are in that, that place where the Lord has said nothing. You're waiting on answer. Well, you came to church for the, on the right Sunday because, praise the Lord, you, you'll learn what to do when the Lord says nothing. And you know you have to be careful when you got carnal people. One of the greatest challenges in life is being surrounded by people who are spiritually in tune and know how to help you. Life is hard. It's pressure. Everybody's under. You know, people think, Bishop don't have any pressure. You, you wouldn't make it a day in my shoes. Got to preach, pray, sing. Most time go on very little rest. Back up the enemy. Bearing on your mind, fighting. Fighting for the unborn. Fighting for this, fighting for that. Still got the burden of having to preach. Sermons don't just drop out the sky. Other burdens. Paul says, that which come upon me daily. Sometimes you ask God, Lord, help me to just handle the pressure. Good God Almighty. This woman was under pressure. Somebody ought to say pressure. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Lord hadn't said anything. And then his disciples. It's interesting there. Their words were not as bad as their motives. And, and let me let me try to be at least fair to them. And, 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 the, and the fairness is this. Their own break. That's the fairness. They're, they're taking a break. And human beings, you, you know, you need a degree of downtime. Everybody goes through this. There are some times when you just want to be left alone. Time the quietness of your tranquility, just being blessed with a holy quietness, and somebody call you, it disturbs you. You pick up the phone, hello, Pastor. The Lord told me to come. Couldn't have been because I'm just sitting there thanking God for the quietness. Lord, I'm just enjoying it. The Lord told me to call you and to tell you to encourage you to get some rest. Then that's when you have to have the Holy Spirit because you know I want to tell I was resting. And that's what I was doing. <laughs> and the Lord said, it's going to be all right. Well, if you will. <laughs> Sometimes. I mean, every, you, you've, never, you've never been there? Well, you just, you just need, you just need some time. Some time. Just, 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 just praise the Lord. So now, li listen to this. Uh, let me preach. And then, you, you, you don't like this preaching. His disciples said to him, they said, came and his disciples came and they besought him saying, send her away, for she crieth after us. The disciples interpreted Jesus' ignoring her as a sign of unconcern. You got to be careful. Not everybody knows how to interpret how God is dealing with you. Or you ought to listen to your leader, but that, that you can't let everybody be your pastor. Not everybody can interpret what's going on. Have you reading the hand of God the wrong way? Be careful how you read God's mail to you. Thank you, Jesus. They thought that Jesus was unconcerned, and, uh, and uh, Mark lets us know that she continued to plead. Even though he wasn't saying anything, she didn't get quiet. She still kept crying and asking for mercy. So the disciples said to the Lord, send her away. Now, some interpretations render this. They really said to him, give her what she wants. Hey, Jesus, just do it. She's a nuisance. She keeps crying. We're here for quietness. We're here for peace. 
just, just heal the daughter. We know you can. We know you're able. Seen you do it before. Just, just come on. Silence her. Not that they care for her. Not that they care for her daughter. I mean, she was a Canaanite, a Syrophoenician. Not that they care, and a Gentile. Not that they cared for. They just wanted to go back to the way it was. We were, we were on break. Heal her. <laughs> Heal her. Get rid of her. Send her home. Praise the Lord. We, 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 we need to get some rest. And we were interested in what you were telling us before she came and disturbed the conversation. You're telling us about you're going to die, stuff like that, and what we need to know. And, and, and we sure ain't trying to understand that. And here she comes, breaking it up. Then... The Lord, are you praying for me? Finally speaks. But when the loving Lord speaks, it's not at all what she expects. He says to her, this woman, standing alone, <coughs> excuse me, facing 13 men. One of the 13 is 100% man and 100% God. Twelve men and one God man. She stands there. The, the twelve, this one are out. The God man hadn't responded at all. She's desperate. Her daughter's sick. So when the God man, Jesus Christ, responds, he says something to her that is rough. Wasn't at all what she expected. He said, I am not sent, but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. This blessing, what you are asking for, I at this time am not sent to do this for Gentile. You're out of my jurisdiction. This is not available to you at this time. Not that I can't do it. Because I can. Not that I'm not able. Because I am. But the time is not right. And how many know that sometimes in your life, events, time, Happenings, they all conflict. Thank you for watching God First. Experience this message in its entirety by calling toll free 877 463 3477 to purchase your copy in CD or DVD format. God First will return next week at the same time. Until then, make every day a God First day.